the month. So today being the third, we're on Proverbs chapter 3. So I figured let's read it together. Amen, family? Actually, I'm going to read it. You follow along. Listen to what it says. <coughs> My son, Solomon says, or the Spirit through Solomon, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. You want length of days? You want long life? Well, don't forget his commandments. Don't forget his ways. Verse 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. So we're to walk around with mercy and truth. His name is Jesus, by the way. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so, as you do this, verse 4, you will find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Amen? You want high esteem? You want to find favor with God and man? Because there's no other two that you're going to be dealing with. This is the way to do it. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. How much of our heart? All, all our hearts. And lean not on your own understanding. What are we not to lean on? I don't understand some things. I don't understand why this is happening. Why that's don't worry about that, he says. Verse 6. In all your ways acknowledge Him. How many of our ways? All, all our ways. Acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. I love that. Verse 7. Here's about pride. He says, don't be prideful. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Don't think you know it all. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Let me touch on that evil part, because automatically we think, well, depart from evil. That means don't go, uh, you know, punch my neighbor in the face. It's not so much that, man. Sometimes evil, well, no, evil is always whatever is contrary to God. Say amen if you're with me. Okay, so listen, some of us, not here necessarily, um, we think that, you know, man, maybe we're cheating the government, Maybe we're doing something por la izquierda, you know, that little term. We've shared that before. Um, you know, any, some type of deceit, some type of, listen, God's watching it all. He understands, and it's very clear that he says, listen, depart from that. I don't want any shenanigans, whether they're as big as you punching your neighbor or whether they're as small as what you think it is that somehow we're pulling some little rig here or there doing something that would dishonor him. Don't do that, he says. I don't want that. Depart from that, he would say. Let's continue. And verse 8, because when we do that, there will be health to our flesh and strength to our bones. We will be healthy physically, emotionally, mentally. Verse 9, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. What he's saying there is give to the work of God. What he's saying there when he says, honor the Lord with your possessions, whatever you have in your possession, don't use it to dishonor God. Amen? Amen. Don't use it to dishonor God. Use it to honor God. Listen, the first thing that Darius and I do in the times that we've gotten a new car, let's say, or we'll, um, wh whatever, whatever we get, this is our prayer, Lord, that this would always be used to honor you, that it would never be used to dishonor you, Lord. Say amen if you're with me. Because from our heart, we want to honor the Lord with everything that we have, whatever it may be. So he says, hey, verse 9, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. In other words, give to the Lord's work. And this is what the result of you doing that will be. So that your barns would be filled with plenty. How many of us want our barns filled with plenty? We want our, our, our checkbook filled with plenty, don't we? Exactly. And your vats, this was the wine vats. Remember, this is an agricultural society, so he's using these type of terms. But it's the same thing when it comes to us. Will overflow with new wine. New wine meant money because you sold it. Say amen if you're with me, family. Notice verse 11, my son, do not despise the chastening, the correction, the instruction of the Lord, nor detest his correction. <clears throat> verse 12, for whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Verse 13, happy is the man that f who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. By the way, this is not something that's, has to be go that, that you have to search for, the, for all your life for. It's an, it's an ever-ending search, but it's always there. 
God says, if you lack wisdom, book of James, ask of me and I will give it to you. And by the way, you want wisdom? Here it is right here, man. Read the Proverbs. There's wisdom galore in there. Amen? So he says, Happy is the man who finds wisdom, verse 13, and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds, in other words, the proceeds of wisdom, what comes from um, finding wisdom and gaining understanding, notice, they're better than profit. And her gain than fine gold, it's better than money. As a matter of fact, it'll get you money. Verse 15, she, the proceeds of wisdom, is more precious than rubies. And all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. God who knows everything says, listen, you want a happy life? Get wisdom. Get understanding. Follow me that that will get you everything. Verse 17, her ways... I'm sorry, verse 16. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. I love that. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. All her paths are peace. When we're doing things right, when we're honoring the Lord, Mira, you can put your head in the middle like this at night and go, ah, and just go to sleep. Because you don't need to be scared of anybody or anything. Because you're right under the Lord's protection and blessing. Amen, family? What a beautiful thing that is. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but there is nothing like that. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous stand as bold as a lion. Amen? Verse 17. I'm sorry, verse 18. She, the proceeds of wisdom is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth, by understanding He established the heavens. By His knowledge the depths were broken up, and the clouds dropped down the dew. He's saying there that God came up with this plan of earth. <laughs> you know how it rains, and then the sun comes out, and then the tree comes up. You know how you go eat something, and I don't mean to be vulgar, but you go to the bathroom, Right? This beautiful system that, that is going on here and that these eyes, how they see and they, and they dissect your eye and it's just an incredible, like n nothing could have thought of that other than God. How we go outside and it rains and the tree comes up and then tree, you know, produces a blueberry and that tastes good or it produces corn and that tastes good because you put butter on it that the cow that he made which ate the grass and then later you... He says, look, the Lord by wisdom, He did all of this. And it's an incredible and, and, and marvelous sight in our eyes. Notice, my son, verse 21, let them not depart from your eyes. Wisdom, keep sound wisdom and discretion. So they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Amen? When you, do, when you don't follow this, your sleep is not sweet. When you steal, cheat, lie, not sweet. I know I've been there. You know you've been there. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Do not withhold good from whom it is due, when it is in the power of your hand to do so. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come back, and tomorrow I will give it, when you have it with you. Do not devise evil against your neighbor, for he dwells by you for safety's sake. Do not strive with a man without cause, if he has done you no harm. Do not envy the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. Verse 32. For the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord. But his secret counsel is with the upright. Notice, the Lord speaks to us that are upright with him in a way that he doesn't speak to anybody else. Uh, verse 33. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked. But he blesses the home of the just. Is your home blessed? Amen. Because you're just and you're walking in his ways. Surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. The wise shall inherit glory, 
but shame shall be the legacy of fools. Amen? Amen. Here's the good news. You don't need to read Proverbs 3 today. Right? I'm going to reread it anyway because it's so good. Hey, let's go to Revelation 16. And so, family, we're going to continue today with uh, Revelation. And I remind you of the scene and that which is transpiring. Um, we're in the three and a half years of the tribulation. I don't need to tell you that we're not here. You know that. We're in the middle of the tribulation. The abomination of desolation has transpired. All hell is breaking loose on the earth. Um, there is a... Um, a massive um, going after the Jews and those that are believers by the Antichrist. Be at rest. Praise the Lord. You know he wants to go to sleep. You can just tell. So, um, so this is what's happening. And so the scene has shifted to heaven. And there in heaven, there is um, judgment coming upon the earth. To those who don't understand, to those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life, to those who have refused to accept the Lord. In the previous chapter, God in His infinite mercy, you remember, though they keep rejecting Him, He sends three angels to tell the people to turn from their ways. Not to worship the beast or the mark, but to worship the one and true God who made the heavens and the earth. Then another angel is sent, and, sa and that angel says, listen, don't get suckered in by the system of the world. Babylon has fallen. What? Is fallen. Amen? That system has fallen, he's saying. Look around, the angel is saying. Look at what's happening. Everything is collapsing before your very eyes. Turn to the living God. Turn to Jesus. So even in the midst of these people, completely... Um, just rejecting God, He sends even yet another chance for these people to turn to Him. Oh, the mercy, the infinite mercy and grace of God. Amen? And thank God for it because I didn't come to be saved until I was 27 years old. I remember the day that I... That I that I understood the, the plan. And I remember like maybe four years or four, three years before that, I was walking in the grove and some lady stopped me and they were doing this. It wasn't that the lady stopped me specifically. And she shared the gospel with me. And guess what I did? Completely rejected it. Completely shunned it. I wasn't interested. It seemed like foolishness to me. Imagine if that would have been my one and only chance. What a nightmare that would have been. Oh, I would have known about that, but I would have found out. And my life would have been absolutely horrible. I wouldn't be standing before you here today. Who knows where I would have been. I have my ideas, but so imagine if the Lord, if that would have been my one and only chance. Listen, let me shoot another one at you. I became a believer. Started walking with the Lord. And then I had this incredible fall in the midst of being a believer. <laughs> Imagine if the Lord at that point would have said, I'm done with you. Where would I be now? Where would I be today? Certainly not here with you. Um, certainly not here being able to love the Lord, being able to love you, and being able to receive the love back. That, that, that cycle that God has in our lives. I love you. So you better love him or her that, that, that I love. And then I love them. And then they love me back. And then the love goes back to the Lord. Amen? And then he brings it back down. And it's just this beautiful circle. But I wouldn't have been enjoying that. Man, the grace and the mercy of God, it's infinite. It is so deep and so wide that we can't even understand it or grasp it. And here, in the midst of people looking at him, forgetting him, rejecting him, God still sends an angel and says, hey, here's your chance yet again. You've rejected me 54 times. Here's another opportunity. Come to me. Turn to me. Because the consequences are going to be much more than you can understand 
or much more than you're going to be able to bear when the time comes. For you will be destroyed and forever be being destroyed. Amen? Amen. I, so I shared that with you the other day. The irony, the, the, the mystery of what that means and yet is, they will forever be destroyed and yet constantly being destroyed forever. They will be where the fire is not quenched, the Bible says, where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth in the horror of the understanding of the situation that they're in, which is, I had a chance, I heard it, and I rejected it. And then I heard the chance again, and I rejected it. How can this be? And there's going to be just this incredible, well, lost opportunity to the point that there would be constant weeping and gnashing of teeth in the horror of the place that they find them, themselves in. Aren't you glad <laughs> that we believe? Aren't you glad that we believe? Amen, family? And so in the midst of it all, God sends yet another angel, but there's still rejection. And so God now prepares to send the plagues, or, or we're going to read it now in, in Revelation 16, upon the earth, for the, in fact there is judgment. There is a judgment that every human being needs to, to receive. You either have the choice of choosing Jesus and getting under Him and having Him pay the price, or you have to pay the price yourself. Say amen if you're with me. Amen. Dos opciones, two options and two options only. Either He pays or you pay, right? If we go to the movies together, hey, there's one of two options for you to get in. Either I pay for your ticket or you pay for your ticket. But somebody's paying for the ticket or else you're not getting in. And this is, this is the case with the Lord. Either you let Him pay, and I keep pointing to the back, because I keep pointing to, to the back to the cross, or you're going to pay. And so here, these people are paying. Even in the midst of this, there are going to be some people that are going to turn to God. Thank God. They're going to be martyred. They're going to be killed. Some of them are going to survive, but the bulk of them are going to be... Um, they're going to be you know, killed for their, for their testimony. They're going to die in the streets. There's not going to be any care for them because they're, well, they're not part of us. The world will say they don't have the mark. So they will be not attended to. So here we are in Revelation 16. You know what's going on. You know what's happening. I'm just going to read through it because there's not much there other than just reading through it and seeing the horror of what's happening. Got your Bibles there? Revelation 16. Then I heard... Let's read the, the last verse of verse chapter 15, which is verse 8. The temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from His power. And no one was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. So here... The temple of God, which at this point um, you can walk in and out of because of the glory, because you're a believer in Christ. And so now you have no sin, so now you can be in His presence. Say amen. Right? You with me? Because right now God sits in His temple. And at the right hand is Jesus, so you and I can walk in. Because we're believers, because there's no sin found in us, because He paid the price. We are righteous. I gave Him my sins. He gave me His righteousness. So now I can stand before God. Amen, family? Right? And so, love that, bro. And so, <laughs> aren't we glad Alex Smith is back? No, 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 that's the way, bro. Because let me tell you, we were going to tell you, no, that's it. But no, thank you, bro. Right here. You, you solidified. Yeah, there's no probation with the Lord, bro. It's come to me, baby. Anyway, so as we look back to the cross, I love that. Thank you, Al. Yeah, that's awesome. And by the way, that's a scene. That This scene is, is very true because, yeah, let's move on. So, praise the Lord. Um, and so, all of a sudden here, as, as these last plagues are going to come out by the last seven angels, the temple is closed. Boom. 
the door closes. Is it a door? I would presume it is, but it's closed. And no one is able to enter. Is it a door? Is it two cherubim like we saw at the Garden of Eden that stand and no one is allowed in? I don't know what it's going to look like. You and I will find out. We'll see it. But no one enters the temple because there is a last judgment coming upon the earth. And it's fulfilled by seven angels who have, notice there, um, seven plagues. And until that's complete, the temple of God is closed. So you and I will look, but we can't enter. But we will understand what's going on. God bless you. So now you know what's happening. Got your Bibles there? Look at chapter 16, verse 1. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. See, there is judgment. It's either Jesus paid for it or you're paying for it. <coughs> Verse 2. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth. And a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped the image. Your attention please. Notice the implication. There are a lot that don't have the beast, the number, the name. Did you see that? Because a loathsome sore and it smelled rotten came upon those and only those that had the mark of the beast. Say amen if you're with me. So there's a bunch that don't have the mark of the beast. They don't receive that. Of course, they're going through their own quote-unquote hell on earth because their lives are in danger at every second. So all of a sudden, these that have taken the mark, the angel pours out this bowl, metaphorically speaking, speaking, uh, yes, because nothing's falling from the sky per se and landing on just these people because this is all over the world. And so a foul and loathsome sore comes out on these people. It smells bad. It's festering. Um, it probably hurts, tender to the touch. Probably all over the body. Who knows? But it's the beginning of these sorrows for these people and, and it's a taste. Let's continue. Verse 3. Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea died. So you can imagine the stench, number one. Say amen if you're with me. You can imagine just the, 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 the disease transpiring, and just the, the whole um, taste of death that's transpiring. By the way, I remind you, and I reminded you last week, 15 and 16 is a, um, it's just an overview of what we're going to see in detail in the next couple of chapters. So it's given us the quickie, but we're going to see it in detail in the next chapter. All these, 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 these bowls being poured out. Look at verse 4. Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and on the springs of water, and they became blood. So not only the sea, but now the rivers. And I heard the angel of, waters, of the waters saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to be, because you have judged these things. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. Their just due. Your attention, please. This angel does this, and he looks to God and he says, you know what, what you're doing, it's right. Because these that you're doing it to, they have murdered. They have, they have shed the blood of the saints. So what's happening to them is right. Say amen if you're with me. Remember, Jesus pays the price. And this is what this angel is saying. They didn't choose the Lord. So now they have to pay the price. And can I share this with you? Here's where it's going to get a little touchy, okay? But stick with me. Many of us were like these, murderers. There, there are people, and I know them, that they have committed straight up murder. But yet they have turned to Jesus. Say amen if you're with me. So they have been forgiven. There have been those, stick with me here. Well, the, let's take it a step further. And the Lord said, if you, ha if you hate somebody in your heart, you've actually committed 
murder. Because the Lord always took it up to the next level. Here, here's where it's going to get a little touchy also, but stick with me. Listen, some of us here, we have partaken of even abortions. Is that not murder? Yes, it is. But the Lord, He's what? He's forgiven us. Amen, family? So you either... So I don't want you to necessarily look at these people that we're looking at here and say, ah, no, 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 look in the mirror <laughs> and say, ah, and then say, ah, thank you, Lord. Because either the Lord paid the price or you're going to pay the price. And these people are paying the price. And it will be the price that they're paying now, and it will be forever. And, the, and this angel says, hey, what you're doing, Lord, God, it's righteous. It's right. And I love that. Verse 7. And I heard another angel from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. He doesn't make a mistake. Verse 8. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. In other words, so in somehow, some way, look at verse 9. And men were scorched with great heat. And they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues. And they did not repent and give Him glory. And so in some way, which we don't necessarily understand right now, this angel, uh, he probably, somehow, some way, the part of the ozone is, is removed. And now the sun, full force. Say amen if you're with me. And so now you walk out. And the sun actually literally not, hey, look how cute my little tan from Cancun is. No, 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 no. Now you're being scorched literally with the sun. Because in a way that we don't quite understand, we think somehow the ozone layer is messed with, the sun is scorching the people. So in other words, you have to be inside. Or you got to get heavily clothed to walk out. I don't even know if that helps. And so these people, that's happening. And what do they do? Instead of repenting, they curse God. Curse you, God. Right? Verse 10. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the, on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and did not repent of their deeds. Verse 12. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. So apparently there's going to be a, a, a country or a nation from the east coming. And so the Lord's preparing this because it's part of the judgment. And so the Lord, uh, the, the river Euphrates is, is blood. Everything is, is, is dead. But... He dries it up to prepare this army that will be coming from the east to make its way through. Say amen if you're with me, family. Don't think of it as it is today that there's petrol and there's gasoline readily available. Things are completely different at that point. Right now, I want to pass the Euphrates River. What do I do? Get the boat uh, on the plane. No, no, no. Somehow, some way, everything is shifted to, 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 to back then. And so the Euphrates River is dried up so that this army that's coming from the east, this kingdom, this king, is going to be able to roll through without any issues. And this is part of God's judgment that He's bringing upon the earth. Verse 13. And by the way, I'm sorry, it said kings. In other words, plural. Because there will be an army, armies coming to descend upon Jerusalem. Verse 12. Am I, I'm sorry, guys. Verse 13. And then I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So in a vision he sees this. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and, and of the whole earth to gather them to battle of that great day of God Almighty. So listen to what he sees. He sees these three frogs that were unclean spirits. And again, this is all metaphorical. This is all symbolic. Coming out of the mouth of the dragon, the prophet, and the, and the, the beast. And these spirits, they go to these kings. And 
pretend the king is here because I was going to use one of you guys, but I don't want to do that because this is such a negative thing that it's not you. Amen? And so listen, here's that king. And this spirit, because that king here doesn't have the spirit of God, so he's subjected to whatever, this spirit comes to this king here and starts stirring him against the other king. Say amen if you're with me, family. Are you understanding? And he, so he's stirring up the war. He's stirring up conflict. And this king is like, yeah, I'm going that route. Sort of like your flesh does to you sometimes. Say amen if you're with me, right? Something, somebody does you wrong, cuts you off. What does your flesh say? Go tell him he's number one. <laughs> yeah. Say those words that are going in your head. You know, all those F words that come up every once in a while. Go, 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 go. That's what your flesh does. Right? I know because it does it to me. <laughs> Get it. Say something. Right? And this is what these, these, these spirits are doing. These unclean spirits are doing to these kings. Stirring them up because it's, it's going to culminate. The river Euphrates dried up, so it's going to culminate in these kings coming against the kings. It's going to be all out war. Let's continue so we can close up shop. Verse 15, Behold, now we switch to the Lord. I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So the Lord intercedes here in the midst of all this craziness and He says, hey, wake up. Wake up because I'm coming as a thief. A thief doesn't announce when He's coming. He just shows up. He says, wake up. Keep your clothes on. Just keep me on lest you be found naked and your shame be seen. And they gathered, verse 16, them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. Again, we're going to see this in detail in the next chapters. Verse 17, Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such, as, such a mighty and great earthquake as has not had occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. Remember, this is the overview. This is the what? Overview. We're going to see it in detail in a second. And no doubt that the nations fell because the, the kings are out in, in war with each other. And great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of His wrath. We talked about that last week. Then every island fled away. And the mountains were not found. What does that mean? That the earth was shaken to, some, to such an extent that the mountains collapsed. And that the sea with the great tsunamis that are going to transpire in that very short of time, they're going to swallow up the islands that exist even today. So the topography is going to be completely different. Might even Florida be done. Everything coastal, done. Verse 21. And great hail from heaven fell upon men. Each hailstone about the weight of a talent. A big old rock falling down. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. Since the plague was exceedingly great. Your attention please family. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat is still recovering. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Amen? For giving me this chance and that chance and all the other chances that you've given us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're not like us, that one chance and forget them. No. You stay steady and true to us, Lord, for your greater call. And I'm just so appreciative of that. Amen, family? Amen. Um, I think that's about it. I have some more things to say, but we'll leave it at that. Please look around. Um, this is what helps me pray for you even though obviously I know you already and, and, and I know you guys know each other already also 
This is the benefit of a small church. But nevertheless, look around because sometimes um, when I'm praying, and I've shared this with you before, I will in my mind stand right here and I start scanning, you know, the, because you all sit in the same place every time. Did you, have, you noticed, have you noticed that? It would be cool to like mess with some of you and... <laughs> amen, amen. It would be cool to... Actually, uh, today I'm a little thrown off because... The, yeah, exactly. Daddy had me a little thrown off today. Uh, I'm a little thrown off today. I'm super turned off. I'm super uh, like thrown off. But anyway, um, but listen, this is what I do. Um, I will scan the room because sometimes, I, you know, I try to remember everybody's name. And, and, but I will just scan the room and the Lord shows me exactly where you're at today. And exactly where you were at last Sunday and the Sunday before that. Because again, except for Provi, Arturo, and Daniel today, sitting where they're not normally sitting. We all sit in the same place. But this is why I tell you, look around. Imagine it. Because that way you can, as you scan the room in your mind, you can pray for everybody. Amen, family? And this is what we need to do because it's not only a get-to, it's a got-to. And it's not only a got-to, it's a get-to. He gives you the privilege, and then He gives you the responsibility. And then He gives you the responsibility, and then He gives you the privilege. And so that's why we want to continue to do that. Amen, family? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank You for this beautiful day. Ah, Lord, we thank You for Your grace and Your mercy, Lord. We thank You for Your kindness, Lord, that has led us to repentance. Thank You for this, these, these people, Lord, Your people, that uh, You love, Lord, and that You've chosen. And that they've um, accepted, Lord. We're appreciative of that, Lord. We're appreciative for you having a hand in our lives, Lord. Being with us, Father. Guiding us and directing us, Lord. Continue the good work that you began in us, Lord. Let us not grow weary. Let us not grow um, complacent. Let us be, um, Lord, on fire and desperate, Lord, for you and the things that pertain to you, Lord. For indeed, that will bring us um, long life, riches, and honor, Lord. Um, and the riches and honor, Lord, they're, they're for your glory, Lord. It's not for us, Lord. We are but shooting stars, Lord, that flash for a moment and then are done. But you are from everlasting to everlasting, Lord. So the riches and the honor and the long life is to honor you, Lord, yet even in a greater way. So please, Lord, continue the good work, Lord. And Father, if there's anybody here tonight, today, Lord, that needs to repent, Lord, I don't know why I'm sensing this in my heart, Lord, but if there's anybody here, Lord, maybe this is for somebody to pass on, I don't know, Lord, but if there's anybody here, Lord, that needs to repent from anything, Lord, that this would be the moment, Lord, that they would come clean, Lord, and just um, set their lives straight, Lord, set their lives aright, Lord, um, so that they can continue to move forward, Lord, for you know, for we know, Lord, that we can't hide anything from you, Lord. And you will expose everything in due time, Lord. So I just pray, Lord, if there's somebody here today, Lord, and if it's not for anybody here that it would be passed on, Lord, that that would be the case. So again, Lord, we shift our eyes to you. And we thank you for your love towards us, Lord. <sighs> thank you for your strength, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said... Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you, family. I will see you, if the Lord allows, Wednesday or Sunday. And listen, remember the men next Sunday.